our deans um, and our SAC committee member, our SAC committee members, um, and our students. So um, part of this came about from a conversation with Dr. Everett. And um, the reason we've named this the, Blake, the Dr. Blake Snowy Lecture Series, um, he was a faculty member here for those of you who don't know, um, from 1990 to about 2012. Um, and he served in several capacities here while he was on campus. Um, he was one of the founding members of the ERSAC committee, um, was on several planning committees for Oklahoma Research Day and the University Research Scholarly Activity or, or Fair. Um, he also was a research advisor, sort of shares the chemistry department and the provost, and then um, finally was the vice chancellor for academic affairs for the state regions. So he's been a long-term proponent of um, undergraduate research, and so I went with Elizabeth about how do people find out information about me. So I googled Dr. Shinobi, found out some interesting facts about him. So, and I never knew this, he was actually a first-generation college student. So. Um, and a lot of our students that come to Southwestern, that's where they're starting from, not all of them, and they're coming from lots of different backgrounds. So um, we thought this would be a great way to honor him, and then also continue that positive moving forward of offering students opportunities and um, getting them outside of their comfort zones to do research and understanding what that research really means. So I'd like Dr. Everett to kind of talk a little bit about the vision for this seminar series. Thank you, Dr. Wren, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, we really were getting done with one research project over the basement of the library, and we took a break to go get a water and a cookie. And that's when I found uh, Dr. Gwynn also taking a break from her afternoon research project, getting ready for her second afternoon research project. Uh, the student they were working with was Shaw Super, and he had just finished up doing a video uh, promoting the research that he did at Notre Dame over the summer. And this was a great story about a first, well, the second generation college student, but the first one that is doing computer science, and really one of the first ones who was trying to do computer science. And he's had tremendous success, and he's been, he did a summer in Ohio working for NASA, and then he did another summer up at Notre Dame doing uh, research with the social sciences. We got them doing that video because Swasu has better research facilities than Notre Dame. And his video that he made at Notre Dame wasn't any good. And so we came and we worked with our library and we did a better job. And so now, Notre Dame is running a video that we shot at Swasu. So, um, but yeah, we started having this conversation about the importance of community and the importance of making them feel like, hey, you know what? You are amazing undergrads. You are doing things that no one else in the world can do. And guess what? That makes you just like everybody else on this campus because we're all kind of uniforms on our own right. And so, we had this conversation about what's the best way to start building that community here at Swansea. And the reason that community is important to me, I have one very firm belief. We have the best undergraduate students in the world. And I, I've got a couple of students that can back that up. Charles Sleeper is one of those. NASA, that center, hired 27 students that's that summer. Four of them got their job done. Two of them were graduate students, two of them were undergraduates, the one undergraduate uh, was Charles Sleeper. Uh, again, Bob, uh, Bob Jones St. Seligent from our, uh, the um, Hardy Seligent's nephew, he came and worked with us. And uh, recently he had moved to Rhode Island because while he was doing a great job at Purdue as assistant administrator, Brown wanted him for research facilitator, so they scouted him. We have some of the best students in the world. And I wanted this, conversation, this to be a chance to have a conversation with those students and remind you, you know what, you are amazing. And there are a lot of other people who are amazing as well. And we want to foster this community and help you get the resources that you need. Keep things on your radar, like the, the LSAMS uh, scholarship. There's a lot of other fun research money out there. We have a lot of great partnerships around the state, around the nation, around the world. And there is an army of people that are willing to show up on a Thursday night at 6 o'clock to eat pizza and talk about research. 
So I just wanted to say again, thank you. And also, I feel like the mission is, I want to continue to showcase some of the best researchers that we have at Swasi. And I also want to continue the conversation that Swasi has the best undergraduate researchers in the world. Thank you all for joining us. So uh, the goals of the program are um, mostly 
to support under, underrepresented minority students in the STEM disciplines. So those are uh, problems of uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, the first goal is to get them to graduate with their bachelor's degrees in those fields. Uh, we also want to uh, uh, expose these students to research experiences while undergrads with sort of the ultimate uh, goal to get them to go to a graduate program to eventually get a PhD. So this is NSF funded, and that's what they want to do is have more underrepresented minorities uh, leading uh, STEM fields in the future. So uh, some benefits for the students. Uh, one is that you can actually uh, make some pretty good money uh, in, in form of a stipend, which is uh, treated like a scholarship. Uh, and this is uh, primarily uh, in exchange for doing undergraduate research with a research mentor. So this kind of takes the place of pay, but there are some other things that we ask you to do as well as a student. Um, one of those things is we would like you to travel and present your research findings at scientific meetings, uh, in the local, regional, or national, and we have funding to send you there. So uh, we would like each LSAM student to travel to at least one uh, one regional or national meeting of the year. Um, there are networking opportunities that are included in, in this and in uh, some of the, the local meetings as well. So we have a, uh, a local LSAN uh, meeting. Uh, we have a symposium which is actually going to be next Friday and Saturday uh, that all the LSAN students from across Oklahoma will go to, and that's going to be in, in uh, there are several hundred uh, of these students in the program right now. Um, and this is also the qualifying event uh, to, uh, to eventually, if you go on to graduate school, receive some, uh, a uh, graduate fellowship called the Bridge to the Doctor. And this uh, essentially pays your full way as a graduate student for the first couple of years. And the only way to be a part of these programs is to be an LSM student as an undergraduate. And OU and OSU have these programs as they sort of alternate and you say they're on. They usually have about 10 or 12 spots for uh, PhD students, um, and they can only sign students who have been in the LSAT program. And they actually struggle sometimes to fill all of these spots. So if you're interested in graduate school at all, and you're eligible for this program, this is a good way to get graduate school paid for. And of course, there's a, a lot of different universities across the country, so this is not just an Oklahoma program, it's a national program. So there, uh, there are dozens of different uh, university doctor programs. In terms of in terms of responsibilities, uh, we do ask you to be performing uh, research one afternoon or morning a week. You can do more than that if you like to, but we want you uh, devoted to some sort of research project every semester in order to receive this, this um, We also strongly encourage you to participate in summer research internships. Uh, we have some funding where this can happen here at SWASU. Um, we also encourage people to apply for many different, uh, the different summer programs that are available across the country for NSF, sponsored and otherwise. Um, there's lots of opportunities, especially if you have some experience uh, that you can uh, travel to places across the country or even outside of the country, which is what we're to talk about in uh, summer research opportunities. Uh, I mentioned the uh, this is supposed to be still water, that's one requirement we're trying to get them work together each year and uh, sort of, uh, introduce the two students, get a chance for that to find out what other uh, uh, students are doing. Uh, in the uh, eligibility, uh, first of all, you do have to be a U.S. citizen, so it's a federally funded program or permanent resident. Um, and the STEM fields at SWASU, so there's quite a few different STEM fields that qualify, but I believe that the majors at SWASU that we typically have students in our biology and biology programs, chemistry, physics, math, uh, technology, and computer science. Um, this is not a program for pre-grades, so uh, NSF does not, uh, they don't really want to be funding a biomedical research that's in our agency's job. So if, if you are pre-med or pre pharmacy only as a major, then you would not qualify. Now, some of these students um, do not know for sure what they want to do when they get their degree. So sometimes we will have a pre-med or pre-pharmacy student uh, declare a second major in one of these areas, and then they would be eligible for the program. But they also need to be able to say that they're considering a PhD and not just a major. And then the uh, 
underrepresented minority status, what that means uh, for NSF is African American, uh, Native American, Hispanic, and the world, the wide Pacific um, So I guess I was studying with the qualified uh, And the, uh, I want to just mention on the Native American, sometimes uh, people are, uh, students who might qualify are a little bit uh, hesitant to to apply for the program, they maybe don't have a tribal card, but they, they, they think that that's necessary. And the only uh, stipulation we have is that if you have identified yourself to SWASU in our demographics uh, information when you apply, and this can also be changed later. So we've got a number of students who did not plan to get uh, for whatever reason uh, initially, uh, but they do have some uh, American heritage. Uh, they can uh, change that, change that uh, registrar's office. So uh, again, I have some of these uh, flyers. If anybody wants this information, there's contact information here as well. We have students who think they're qualified and uh, like to, uh, to get them involved in the program, uh, send them on up. All right, and I guess I am going to be introducing uh, Elizabeth Alder, who is uh, a chemistry major who's been doing research with me for a number of years, at least four years, I'm going to say. And uh, she's had lots of opportunities. She is in Los Angeles, um, and she's had a number of different uh, interesting uh, experiences related to her undergraduate research. And she's going to talk to you about a little about the research itself, uh, but also about how to get involved in those activities. So, Dr. Hubbard's in one lab. 
And so after my Gen Pen 1 lab, I was uh, pre farm at the time, and Dr. Hooden was like, well, you can consider chemistry and you can do um, this LSAM program. And I really, I worked in the pharmacy for a little while, and I realized that pharmacy wasn't the route I wanted to go. Um, I worked in pharmacy for four years, actually, before I realized that, you know, it's not quite for me, but I really enjoyed the lab. So this quote actually came with the slideshow presentation, but I, I like it. Uh, person who's never made a mistake, never tried anything new. And I thought that was funny because um, my first day, when I told Dr. Kuhn this a couple days ago, I was thinking about it. My first day in Kuhn's lab, um, the sink was running, and the water was coming out, and I was twisting the knob, and it would not turn off. And I, I looked at him and I said, what am I doing wrong? And I was like, Dr. Kuhn, uh, this water won't stop. And he looks at me and he goes, is it hot water or cold water? And I guess I was turning the wrong knob. And so, and so um, I didn't think I'd be going to France. So let's, just, let's, just, let's just say that. <laughs> but lo and behold, four years later, here I am. So um, you can really start from anywhere, actually. And uh, to, to that point, I actually did start college in remedial math. I wasn't very good at math in high school. And I knew that when I went to college, that's something I wanted to improve on. So I wanted to do math. And I, I passed Cal 2, I'll say that. Um, but uh, I was able to do things that I didn't think were possible. So basically, I'm a, a researcher at SWASU. Um, again, I started at SWASU and I qualified for OKL SAM. And here's a photo of me, here's some of our leggings we do. And this is Human's research group. Um, a lot of, some of people uh, graduated or are no longer in the group. And that's kind of what I like about the group. It's like a family, it's always changing. But you, you never forget the people you meet. That, uh, this was actually taken at the Louisiana conference, um, and there are several students, some of whom are still actually in the lab currently, and some who graduated and gone on to graduate school through the LSAM program. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about my research here that I do with Dr. Guggen. This won't be a super duper technical talk, so if you're not here for the chemistry, that's okay. But what I do in Dr. Guggen's lab is um, I work with oops, ACE and cycles, which are um, we call them ligands, which we use to make novel metal complexes. Um, and these metal complexes allow us to do a variety of different things. But I'm going to completely talk about the synthesis of one of these guys here. Um, the standard, uh, the standard Aza macrocycle was the tetracycle for a long time, which has the four nitrogen groups, as you can see there. And then we added a cross bridge in the middle to add stability. Um, and this can form metal complexes, as you can see. Um, we add we add metal complex in the middle, and it forms a pretty stable structure. And these structures can then be used in uh, mainly MRI contrast agents. So what we use with our collaborators in Hull, England, um, and there are a variety of other uses too. Um, here we have our basic tetraacyl macro cycle, and um, we use a glyoxyl addition to add our or cross bridging side, and we use a methyl iodide addition to get our methyl bridges on there, or methyl arms on there, and the methyl arms uh, create a more stable ligand. So, what we do in the lab is we are working with a five member ring, which hasn't been done before, but would logically be more stable in, a, in the cross bridge setting. So, I guess I should say up until we have been doing it. It really wasn't looked at a lot for metal chemistry. So here we do the, um, the addition of the arm. No, I'm holding the arm. We addition the cross bridge, and we again attack it with the methyl iodide and um, methyl cyanide to get our three pendant arms. And the three pendant arms, front versus the two pendant arms, kind of add stability and rigidity to the complex, along with our cross bridge. And so right there, you can actually, this looks flat, but really what it is is kind of this, almost, um, what would you call it, like this? Yeah, it's happening, kind of happening. I, I, I use the baseball glove analogy, which people don't know. It's kind of like a, it's, it's shaped like this, and so hopefully a metal line is going to go right inside. And so it holds it tight like a baseball glove. And so, this is just a group which we synthesize the pentacycle. That's our aspect. We've got the one really big peak, which is very good. Um, and these are elemental. 
And so here we show that we are calculated is about 57, 44, and I guess that's spot on, I guess. Um, but just to show the group show that we are actually synthesizing what we say we're synthesizing. Um, and here, here's a better example of what I'm talking about. These complexes are actually folded. So you can see here how they are. Um, they're folded and they can easily fold the metal aside. Um, the pentacycle structure is actually not known. Is it at this point? I don't know if it's not yet. Okay. But um, we, we theorize that it is going to be more stable um, and just good. It also allows for more bond, uh, binding size to metal complex. So here are some theoretical possible uh, ways that our methyl arms back is attached to our pentacycle. Um, we've got a variety of ways. We've got the most ideal way, which is the three arm, and then we have um, a couple of different um, possible routes where only two arms add on, and it depends on which site, which nitrogen site that it attaches to first, and then the second one has to fall in place from there. And then if the second one doesn't fall into where we want it to, it can create only two, the this, the, the, the sterics, and then the other two. So we were actually really able, we were actually shown that we could actually um, methylate at all three sites. And we are actually able to take any, um, any, of, these any of these ligands and make a complex with it. Here you can see the different methyl, the different methyl ligands my angle. Um, and then here again is some more elemental analysis of these things. And so here we, in the spectrum, we can see that um, we, we talked about how there are different arms. Uh, some of these arms, based on the way they add, kind of change our cross bridge structure a little bit. This is the ideal one where it allows for a three partner bridge in the middle. Um, I guess they are all three parted bridges, but not bond into three nitrogens perfectly. So um, ideally, what, what we do is the end goal is to crystallize this complex. And crystallize it is to basically get the ligand and the metal out of um, the, the ligand and the metal to form a crystal lattice that we can then analyze with what is basically an MRI machine. Um, and that will allow uh, you guys to uh, just be I'm sorry, the public to see that we actually have formed our complex. And this structure here uh, is what one of those three models might look like that you can develop with a crystal structure. So the main goal is a crystal structure. And so with this chemistry is um, that you're familiar with is actually what allowed me to. Uh, qualify for research overseas uh, because we were able to find professors overseas that were doing similar metal chemistry, maybe not, not with the exact same land, but chemistry that involved having a metal complex inside. So these are some of the conclusions that we can draw from our work. Um, I think what we really want to talk about is uh, undergraduate research here at Swasu. And um, I, I was telling my parents that when I came here to Swasu as a pre-pharmacy major, I really had no idea the quality of the research and the, uh, I really, I just, I told my parents I loved that. I, I kind of loved that. I didn't, I didn't do a lot of research with regards to the research facility at this school. I just knew that there was a pharmacy school, that's, that's why I came here. Um, it was cheaper than OU and it was a little farther from home, that was always the, that was the that was the draw. So uh, I came here and I started in Dr. Kubin's lab my second semester here. So I wasn't a freshman because I said earlier I uh, had a year of college, but I was still kind of getting my bearings straight. And right eyed bushy tail, you walk into this room full of all this equipment, and Dr. Kubin's like, okay, this one's a hundred thousand dollars, this one's three hundred thousand dollars, that one's half a million, and you're just like. I don't want to break anything, I don't want to touch, you know, do anything wrong. Um, but, you know, I, you only learn, I mean, that quote earlier, you don't, you learn by making mistakes. And so, 
I haven't broken any equipment yet, thank goodness. <laughs> but uh, let's, 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 let, me, let me just graduate without breaking any equipment, and then we'll, then we'll see. Um, but I'm going to talk about really quickly, I don't know, we're going to talk about what do you do research, why would you or I get involved, and um, how did I personally get involved? So what do you do in research? As um, mentioned previously by our um, Dr. Scobie, is that we are actually on kind of the cutting edge of what is happening in your field. Um, you may not always be doing, uh, you know, I, I don't work on airplanes, but that would be amazing if I did. But um, this is the chemistry that I do in um, a lot of the research we do here at Swasu is brand new chemistry. You know, it's brand new chemistry or biology. It's something that hasn't been published before, hasn't been done before. Um, and that's kind of the benefit to research. And that's why students do research. Um, and here at Swasu, we have just amazing faculty who are always on top of it, but also manage to juggle the student workload, the students, the, um, the teaching responsibilities. Dr. Kuhn just became chair. So now we have a professor, the chair, and a research advisor. And I hope that he, he will manage it all and not. <laughs> not be in the baby office on the end of the semester, that would be great. So, why should students get involved? Um, I wasn't hesitant about doing research, I thought it was exciting. I personally did not know all of the, just what all research entailed, not even in the lab, but from a non laboratory perspective. Um, I've been to so many events, I've been across the country, I've made friendships that are going to last me a lifetime. I talked to um, Students, every day, you get involved in activities for charities, outreach programs, and things like that. This photo here is taken of the chemistry club, and we were at the Relay for Life, which is um, for cancer, and many people have been affected by cancer. And so uh, my father was right out of high school. Um, so it's just very, uh, it was very important to me that we do some of that, and it was very nice to engage the community in that way. So. These are things that you probably don't think about when you think about doing research. You don't think about getting involved with the community or things of that nature, but you do. And um, very quickly, these two photos. Um, this one is when I got my Research Excellence Award here at Swasu. And then this one was actually awarded at the LSAM um, meeting that we go to every year. Uh, I got second place uh, for a presentation of a poster in non-life sciences. So the benefits of research I will um, show on some other slides is that you get to present your research, so not you're not always in the lab. You're telling people what you're doing, and you're excited to show them. I'm always excited to show my research. I enjoy it. Um, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be doing it. I think I told a lot of people in my first semester probably that I enjoy working in research lab. I mean, we'll hold that over my head when I make up an excuse to not come in. So <laughs> if I hold that, if I have a test or something, they're like, "Well, I thought you enjoyed research." Um, but let's see here. here's some of the places that we. Uh, have travel. So this is actually not my research group, but this is one of the cool things about the chemistry program is that we have a majors program. So it's the organic chemistry majors program. Um, I'm not exactly the person to talk about it, but I'm pretty sure Dr. Ellis is kind of the one who championed that in terms of making sure that students are doing research while they're getting their degree. So if some students aren't able to get research they can't uh, they can do the time, they can actually take this class, which still coincides with the class that they need to take, but instead of a regular <coughs> lab where you're doing experiment every week, this allows for students to um, work week by week on a new research project, um, something that the professor doing the uh, project picks. And so we were actually able to, as a class, go to um, Louisiana for the presentation. I was already there for some other research. But I was also able to present my research that I had done in the major's lab. So that was really cool. And some of these students uh, weren't actively involved in research or department, but they were still able to present their research because they had done some research, which I think was really cool. Up here is, um, again, talking more very quickly about um, additional opportunities. I went with last summer before I went to France. I went with Dr. Gwen and some other students for a Women in STEM conference in Houston. And we were able to tour the labs at the Southwest Research Institute in in Houston, in the San Antonio. And then we went to Houston to see uh, the NASA, and we actually see the NASA uh, kind of museum, the headquarters, things like that. And we actually got to talk with Jean Bartow, who's that the, the, so the an actual astronaut. So that was really cool. There is us in a van before we're about to head off to, I think, Louisiana, actually. 
So this is an opportunity to research how to get started. Um, you can talk to your fellow students uh, about research. You can talk to me, talk to other students that you know, um, speak to the professors, set up an appointment. Um, and then some paid opportunities still exist. And again, LSAM is one of those opportunities to get paid. There's, there's Blake. And I got involved from the Louis Soaps Alliance for Minority Participation. Um, again, it allows for people of um, historically underrepresented groups, is the correct term. And that's what I like to use um, to participate, participate in research. And so um, these are, this is, this is more about um, OKL sandwich with Dr. Kuhn Peshel earlier. You can get a stipend, you can travel for funding. Every, with OKL Sam every year, I'm actually able to present in three places. I present here at Swasu, at the ACS, and at the OKL Sam meeting, usually in Stillwater, which is where the headquarters are. So every year as a student, I'm going to three different places for that my research at least. So research abroad, here's where we are here now. Um, and so this is, I spent, this summer I spent 12 weeks um, in France, and I got to spend 12 weeks in France because of the metal chemistry I do here at Swasu. And um, I was actually in this little town, it was that little, it was a town called Grenoble, which is nestled like right there in the Alps. Um, and it was a really pretty city. I was there for 12 weeks. I worked with the University of Grenoble to uh, help them further their research. So, a uh, very quickly overview of what, what was it like living in a foreign country every month. There was a lot of new challenges, but also new experiences. Um, meeting the locals is very interesting. Um, most people were actually really nice. I didn't expect them to not be nice, but it was very nice. I got to try new food, um, I got to learn a new language, and I actually wrote about this in one of my essays for, um, about this. Mastering patience was very important. Not only with strangers, who were like, what language are you speaking, why are you here, um, but also with yourself. You have to be very patient with yourself. I actually told our group when they, I texted them. I was like, I said the bar in the bakery for 20 minutes. So here practicing my order of I want a brownie. And I went in line, I ordered a brownie, and I went home and I was like, I was these are doing a couple months, but I was like, I was like, every day is exhausting. But it was great. But every day was exhausting where it was like you would have to memorize your sandwich order and you're just trying to be polite and be nice. So mastering patience not only with locals and foreigners, but you're the foreigner in that sense with, with yourself. It's very important. And I learned a lot about myself, I'll just say that. So um, so what I was telling people was that learning to live in a new city um, was very interesting. I think at every, every point in somebody's life, you have to go and learn in a new city to learn where the pharmacy is, you have to learn where the bookstore is, you know, um, there are things to do in town, things like that. I had to do that, I had to learn new currency, and I had to learn new language. So it was a lot, but I was grateful because my program allowed for 12 weeks instead of the usual eight weeks that um, happens. Uh, I, we talked about maps in Ohio. One of our chemistry students, David Tress, was actually able to go to Ohio himself, and he got eight weeks there too. Um, but I was able to get 12 weeks, which was amazing. And it was honestly, uh, I think with just eight weeks, we did it enough. Um, and the area of Papa Grenoble is in the French Alps. The views were amazing. I literally opened my window every morning and I saw the mountains. It was gorgeous. Um, a little tiny room, but it was, the views were really what it made it what it was. So on campus, I worked with my metal chemistry, and the lady was completely different. So the baseball glove I talked about earlier was a completely different baseball glove, and it didn't even work like that, it was only a pitcher. Um, so I was both physically and chemistry-related chemistry in a foreign environment, um, but I, you know, I did my best with what I learned from Southwestern. I was, so I've been here a student here for three years at that point, so I got reached on my belt. So, Here's our um, structure of our metal complex. These are the crystals I was talking about. I actually grew um, some crystals, and I was excited. We always have to see crystals. Um, sometimes, sometimes they can be finicky, and they won't grow. But when you grow them, you can actually get a 3D representation model of your structure. And so that's what, um, that's the, kind of like the end goal. Because with the, with the crystal structure, you can write uh, paper in this cell. Okay, and then um, to, I worked with students from South America, Mexico, France, obviously, Germany, Poland, and Russia. I saw these students every day. Um, it was very interesting. I was very grateful. We were at a university, so most of them spoke English. Um, 
I told most of them, I see the little Spanish from high school. And Spanish and French are like cousins. So I was able to figure out some things. But it was just an amazing experience to every day I would talk to Lorna, and she was my friend. She was from South America, and then Emiano was from Mexico, and then um, Leia was from France, and I um, and uh, Catalina left before I was finished, but she was from Russia, and she went back to Russia to stay with her family. And I think she didn't come back and finish her master's there. But it was it was such a it was such a almost a humbling experience in the sense that. Um, you really, I mean, obviously when you travel, you realize how big the world is, but when you travel and you meet other people from different countries, you realize you're all doing the same thing and um, working towards a common goal. And without my research at Swatsu, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So it was just very, it was, it was very honored to be there with these students. And some of these were master students. And I learned from them and they learned from me. Some of these students were more bookwork oriented and they had done all the bookwork, but then maybe they weren't sure on certain lab techniques. And so I was so, I was afraid that I would be the, I'm a fish out of water, but I was able to teach some of these students some techniques that they hadn't seen before, and they were able to in turn teach me some of the things that I need to know about working in a lab. So this is a brief overview of my, I won't go into great detail here, of the research I did in France. Um, but my job was to make a metal catalyst, which um, uh, pulls hydrogen and makes hydrogen gas out of the hydrogen. And basically the, the whole concept behind this is to have a green energy uh, produce the hydrogen gas gases and um, do it I think with yeah with water just for solar energy. So you, there's no um, hopefully no carbon footprint is what the goal of this project was. That's the broad overview. Uh, here are some of the uh, known known uh, ligand complexes that do uh, the pulling up of hydrogen and turning into hydrogen uh, gas that we uh, that are known. And so my research was to kind of expand that again on the cutting edge to expand that. And I was working with these ligands specifically um, all summer. And uh, we had I had some starting ligand from a previous student, and I was able to put the metal in and the metal uh, start metal complexes with crystals. That was my research for about four weeks. And then we ran out of ligands and I was thrown into organic synthesis. And um, that was a journey of patience and self-discovery. Uh, when you're working with just 300 milligrams of ligands and you have to run a column and every time it comes out, you come out with less ligand and it deteriorates when you touch it and you just, you know, and you just want to go home and Think about why you're there, but it was it was it was a good experience, and um, my mentors were patient, and they understood that there's a reason some of this stuff hasn't been published, and that's what's what you learn. And sometimes there's a reason something hasn't been published, and because it's leaving will fall apart if you look at it funny. But if, it, if, if you can get it and you can produce it, it does great things. So um, overall, studying abroad was really a once in a lifetime experience. I was able to travel and go places. I wasn't always in the lab. I was for a lot of the time. But on weekends, I would go and travel. This is actually a city called um, Annecy, or Nice, I think it's pronounced Nice, but it's spelled like Annecy. And it's actually called the Venice of, Italy, uh, the Venice of France. And they have canals like you would, if they have in, um, in Italy. Oh, I just get my mind. They have canals in Italy, and you can see um, the lakes are just beautiful. Some of these mountainside lakes are just gorgeous. Um, and the water is like this crystal blue. I think I can't figure out what it's some chemical or maybe some protein from the mountains that makes that water like turquoise. And it, it just it's just beautiful. And I met some of the greatest people I've ever met. I, you know, you learn patience with traveling, and you don't speak a language, and you have to make a train connection. Um, and honestly, all of this wouldn't be possible without the faculty for its Um Obviously, that included was a huge. Um, uh, a huge role in that, and he really was able to help me get in contact with people at LSU. But even before that, um, just, as a, just as an undergraduate student, um, people in the coverage department know about two years ago, so during work, during the OCAM, I was really thinking about changing my major. Um, because, you know, OCAM isn't exactly the pain of heart. But uh, a lot of my folks encouraged me to stick it out, and I mean, 
every professor in the department. I mean, uh, Dr. Ubin, Dr. Hendrickson, Dr. Ellis, Dr. Gaspartisan, uh, Dr. Barton, Dr. Gwynn. I mean, all those professors, I couldn't have done it without them. Every single professor in that department, at some point or another, I talked to, and they, in some way, helped me that I can't even go into here. Um, emotional support, um, just like uh, academic support, you know, when you have a question, whatever it is, and we really do have some of the greatest faculty, I feel like, I don't know, in the state or in the world, but honestly, that it, it just, I wasn't getting that kind of support here at TCC, and so that's why I came this month, too. I didn't even know the faculty was that good, good but um, it, it is amazing. I think the faculty is really what set like this school apart from any other school, hands down. And so here it is, my last, my last slide. Here's some additional traveling by other students. So I was over in France for the summer um, and learned different culture and things like that. And some of our other students have actually got to go. This is Ashley Walker. She was the student before me who got to go to France on this LSU funded um, coordination with LSAM. And Ashley was actually there for six months and she got to do a lot of traveling. She uh, went pretty much everywhere, I think. <laughs> If there was a place to go, actually went, she went to Germany, she went to, um, I think she went to Italy, I'm sure. Uh, uh, she went to England, uh, Paris, just wherever you could go, actually went. Um, these, this, is, this is Mike uh, Gourbet and uh, Donnie, what, why is Donnie's last name Stephen? Jones, Jones, it's Jones. Donnie Jones. Um, they actually both went to OU and an OS, OU and an OSU respectively through the British Doctor program that <coughs> LSAM offers. They both went and spent eight weeks in England, Paul England, with our collaborators there. And then uh, this is them, I guess, that was in Sandwich Doctor. So that was the first day. Everybody was jet lagged and they were tired and they didn't want to get a photo. Um, so that's definitely how I felt uh, when I heard it. So, but there are plenty of opportunities here at Swasu. I'm want to speak from my personal experience or hearing things see that we have an ample opportunity for students to do research, not just here in this university or in this state or in this country even. So um, I would like to thank Dr. Glenn and Dr. Sonobi for allowing me to talk. I probably definitely went over. We're pretty close to the, you know, definitely went over the 20 minute mark, but um, I wanted to make sure that I got kind of at the root of why Swats to his own board and it's a faculty. I think at the end of the day, it's a faculty and the service that we have here. This, this campus and the chemistry department in general would not be what it is without our amazing teachers. Um, and I would be here if we were. So, that's all I have. Shame almost, as sad as that is. 
where my great grandfather, he didn't get on the wall at the time that was not viewed as the right thing to do. Um, and then we, as ancestors, went, well, uh, we were almost not discouraged, but it just wasn't encouraged to talk about their history. And I actually learned a lot about my Native American history after getting into this program. So I think maybe some of the, the fear there is, um, I think, afraid of. Taking, taking money for something that you, maybe you don't feel comfortable with, with the with people that LSAM. But um, I think one of the things, and hopefully this seminar series will do that, is to expand uh, the, the research aspect of SWASU to students. So to get students out there um, and be like, hey, do you need to do research for SWASU? And I think also, I think a barrier of students is that they might not know, that they may not think that they're smart enough, you know? Um, definitely, I didn't. I think I was, you know, not smart enough. But I definitely didn't think, you know, <laughs> I told the story about the water faucet. <laughs> so, <laughs> turning on that, uh, turning on the cold water. And I thought, why is it the hot water turning on, you know? Uh, but I think that is one of the big barriers. But it's not something we can't overcome at all. I think maybe we need to have more outreach programs like Dr. Gwen and others know we have set up here where um, we have students. I think students talking about research is probably going to be the best way. Um, and I think other students, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know the whole answer to that question. I know my answer, but I think there are students that Dr. Kuhn and I have talked to me about, and part of it, I think, is a student to student basis, and be like, don't tell XYZ to get an LSAM, you know? And we've got a couple applications that are half and finished. And so I need to ask more students what the barrier is, because I have asked students, hey, why don't you join? And you kind of get into, oh, and the XYZ, you know, like, like, just kind of dismiss it. So I, I don't know the whole answer to that question, but that is a good question that probably needs to find the answer on. Thank you.